Welcome back to DXB Today. Um, now, have you ever had that moment you've got, you've got voices in your head? Have you ever had that moment? You, we have it on a daily basis because we literally have voices in our head as well. <laughs> but it's not every day that our next guest has voices in their head, so much so that at voice in a pilot's headset is the official handle of Johanna Amaheri, Senior Air Traffic Control Officer. But Johanna, not just that as well, uh, as you've just been mentioning, uh, you've worked at the air show, you've worked yeah. in aviation, you've trained, yeah. you're, a, uh, you're a, an air traffic controller, so basically you can take over the show. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> it is called air traffic control for a reason. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm a senior air traffic controller. When I did validate, I was the youngest woman to succeed in the facility, uh, which is an area control center based in Abu Dhabi. Um, and then three years ago, I became an instructor as well. So I teach uh, the next generation on the job how to get it done. And I help them cross the finish line, which is an absolute honor. Um, what else do I do? Can I ask you why air traffic control? For someone who's been so much invested in the world of aviation throughout your career, and it's obviously yeah. a fascination for mm -hmm. you, um, it's no big secret that air traffic control is one of the most stressful jobs in the world. So why yeah. take it on? So I was 19 years old when I got recruited into the program, and the reason why I applied in the first place is because I was looking for a scholarship opportunity in order for me to retire my mother, basically. I decided to take on uh, the role of the breadwinner in the household, finish off my younger sisters in their high school education. So I took it on because of that. Um, the training period, they pay you while they train you, and then you guarantee the job at the end. Wow. So Amazing. I took it on at that age, at 19, uh, finished it in two years and four months, not that I was counting. Um, <laughs> I finished at 21, and you know I made sure I retired my mother while I was still in training oh. and just took over and mm. that was the motivation and the reason you know most people they have plan a b and c well i only had one plan a and i had no uh option to fall back on so no that's why that's why i, mean, I made that's it through you your dreams right 100 oh, percent. my dream is to be happy on the 30th of every month <laughs> so first of all respect that's Thank off you. to you um second of all i mean I mean, you're talking and I'm sitting here and recalling sight, um, scenes from Top Gun because it's just so dramatic in my head. What is yeah. it actually like while you're doing your job? How intense it is, is it? Mm -hmm. How Are you stressed out or do you actually reach your pace where it's very calm? And it's mm -hmm. obviously a male-dominated industry as well. It so is, yes. You ask do you spill the, the coffee woman. and curse Tom Cruise? Because I think that's just in Hollywood, isn't it? That's just in Hollywood. <laughs> um, so basically, so air traffic control is known to be one of the most stressful jobs in the world. And I'll put it into perspective for all of you. Um, imagine playing a video game with no game over option and the stakes are human life. That is the gravity of the job. Sweating. Yes, <laughs> uh, my hands are sweating <laughs> as well, just thinking about it. And I have a night shift tonight. <laughs> so yes, it is a very stressful job because the responsibility, it's human life and nobody actually knows what we're doing behind the scenes. Mm. Everybody thinks the pilot um, is in control of everything that they do, which is true, but they are told what to do by air traffic control what altitude to climb or descend to, what speed to fly, and ensure they're on the correct flight path to reach their destination. If you ever open up flight radar, the minute you put it out there, you see all these airplanes, it's overwhelming. Mm. Well, all of these aircraft have one thing in common. They're speaking to air traffic control and following the instructions we give them because they fly the aircraft, but we have the full picture of what is happening. It's like we're the puppet masters and these are our strings. So what you're trying to say is you cannot have an off day. <laughs> I cannot have an off day, no. Um, but, you know, I only work 18 days a month. So, you know, mm -hmm. six days on, four days off. I have the time to recuperate, literally, and then go back into work. Right. Amazing. What's yeah. been the, um, the most challenging scenario that you've seen so far? Because you seem very, like, very into it. You're, you're very experienced, clearly. Yeah. What would you say has been the most challenging where you thought, Oh dear, <laughs> but you, you came over it, you came through it. Um, well, to be honest, I feel like the entire training program was quite difficult. So they train you to be able to handle the stressful jobs, right? So I have my aura ring on and now they assess your stress levels. And when I'm at work, it's so strange. The aura ring says I've had a relaxed day. No. And when I'm on my days off and I'm with the dogs and I'm running around and everything, that's when it says I've had a stressful day. <laughs> so it's all about knowing how to handle your stress and turning mm. the stress into fuel to get the job done. Um, and it's just because I had really good instructors to teach me how to emotionally compartmentalize, rock into work and get it done. Um, you know, so, you know, when everyone looks out and they're like, oh, wow, the sky is so beautiful and it's raining. 
I'm at work and it's super extra stressful <laughs> because all the aircrafts need to deviate from their flight path, which is a set route in the sky. Imagine yeah. we have invisible highways in the sky. Yeah. Well, they have to deviate off that path and we need to make sure that they remain safe when they do that. Yeah. So every time you look up and you think, oh, the sky is beautiful, Jehena is crying at work. <laughs> <laughs> but not so stressed because your ring tells you. My ring not. said I'm not stressed, so I guess I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your journey as like, you know, working in a male dominated kind of field? Mm. Um, how did you navigate that, you know, in your growth journey where there's not that many women around yeah. and, you know, obviously excelling 10 years <laughs> later? Yeah. What was that like for you? Um, so the line I like to use, short and punchy like me. Um, all because it's a male dominated industry doesn't mean women can dominate the challenge that it brings. And I truly believe that. So when I got recruited, I was 19 years old. I rocked up full glam. I wasn't into colored abayas just yet. So that came along later, but, um, everyone saw me and I don't fit that mold of male. It's just simply male. Um, and I was underestimated, but that actually, I decided to make that a benefit for me yeah. because even if I showed a glimmer of <laughs> intellect, they were like, wow, she's smart. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really smart. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone was wowed consistently and I just took it as a challenge. Well, I'm, if that's what you think of me, that's your problem and it's your opinion, but I'm here to show up. I have a responsibility to my mother, my two younger sisters. We had a lot of pets, them as well, you know? So <laughs> I had so many lives not on the sky, but also on the ground to take care of. So it was tough, but I believe everything is all about mindset. If your mindset is um, attuned to focusing on you and getting it done and having a good support system around you, then you can get through anything. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. absolutely. So Johanna, we want to thank you for your mindset yeah, and for welcome. persevering <laughs> and teaching us a thing or two today. You're welcome. But now I think it's time for the quiz. So Dina? There's a quiz. No, I just seem smart. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're really smart and you're really funny. I'm going to give you a bit of a break and shift it over. Oh no. <laughs> it's time to quiz you oh, as our what? guest <laughs> co-host. This is DXB in 60 and we're going to find out um, a few things about you. Okay. So you try. You need to try to answer as many questions as you can in about the 60 myself. seconds about yourself. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's start the clock, guys. Go! Anna, yes. if you're not the founder of Azure X, which industry would you be working in? Acting. Acting, <laughs> not just. Uh, one thing you cannot live without? Coconut water. Okay, that's so random, right? <laughs> Your motto in life and work. Similar to what's just been said, you know, take the challenge on full speed. Your hidden gem in Dubai? Three Phil's sushi restaurant. Oh. Your inspiration or muse? My mother. A book you're reading at the moment? Something on space, <laughs> commercializing space. <laughs> now, Many books. We, we know it's not the movie that I, or series I talked about. What, what's the top series you've watched this summer? Um, I'm not a Netflix person, <gasps> but I have just watched part of Beckham, which I recommend. Yeah, it was great. Um, top podcast recommendation. Um, so the, oh gosh, CNBC space podcast. Very, very good. Very good episodes with different founders. Okay. Why Dubai? Because of what's been built here in the last 30 years. Yeah. Sounds spot on. I'm ready now. <laughs> <laughs> you and me after the show, I've got other questions for you. <laughs> Listen, we can't thank you enough, uh, both of you, for joining us. Thank you very much indeed thank for you. sharing your stories with us, sharing yes. your journeys with thank us, you. and uh, joining us here on DXP today. It's really kind. Thank you. Uh, right, we are going to take a short break, but after that break, uh, one of us is going to get into our sports kit. Uh, it is the Dubai Fitness Challenge, and we will be celebrating it with the team from Crank next. <laughs> 